This video will discuss the use of project crashing to try to improve the completion time of a project within a specified budget or to meet a certain deadline. In the worksheet we see here we have a list of activities required to complete a project, their predecessors, the mean activity time, and the potential crash time. To crash a project means to shorten the length of it by spending extra resources or money. In this worksheet, the earliest start, earliest finish, late start, late finish, and slack times have already been calculated, or at least the formulas have already been set up. So those will recalculate when we get the correct realized time into this model. What we see here is that we have a normal cost to complete the project, or at least each activity in the project, and we have a crash cost, which is always higher than the normal cost. To find the maximum time that the project can be crashed, we need to calculate the maximum crash time for each activity as the mean time minus the crash time. We interpret this, for instance, for activity A as the normal time to complete the project on average is 4, but if we crash the project, it can be completed in 3. So the project can be crashed, or that activity can be crashed, rather, by one week. This formula is the same for all activities, and we can copy this down. see here that one activity has a maximum crash time of zero, so there's no opportunity to crash that project. Now we need to calculate the crash cost per period, in this case per week. We'll do this by taking the crashing cost larger cost of the project with crashing minus the normal cost divided by the number of weeks it could possibly be crashed. This formula is the same for all activities and we can copy the formula down. We see an activity like D. It could potentially be crashed by four days. The increase in cost due to crashing would be 300, or $2,600 minus $2,300. So if we state that on a per week basis, it would be 300 divided by four, or 75. And the 75 appears in column B. We see one error in column B. Activity C cannot be crashed, so we can't calculate its crash cost per week. What we can do is just put an arbitrarily large number in that cell, and that will steer the solution away from crashing activity C. The crashing problem is a decision problem, so we'll have decision variables for the crash time of each activity. These will be the cells in column G. And I'm simply just going to put zeros in these for the moment and highlight them in yellow so they're easily identified. The realized time to complete the project will be the mean activity time. minus the crash time. So column G really contains the number of weeks that we are choosing to crash the project. This formula will be the same for all activities, so we can enter it on the first row and copy it down.
now that the realized time is populate, populated, we can see that all of the other times for each activity are populated. And we can see that the largest latest finish time is 16. So right now 16 is our estimated completion time for the project. We'll calculate the total crash costs for the project. This will be the sum product of the weeks we choose to crash and the crash costs per week. This will be the objective cell, and so it's easily identified I'm going to give it a different color. This problem will have two constraints. Constraints are limitations on the values that the decision variables can take. In this case, we have a project completion time that's determined as the latest finish time of activity G or activity F, but we can key on G. We need this time to be less than or equal to a deadline. This is problem 320 from the textbook, and in one of the questions of the problem, it asks us to reduce the time by one week. In other words, we'll implement a deadline of 15. By placing this on the spreadsheet, we'll be able to put it into Excel's solver tool. The less than or equal to sign in the spreadsheet is just for information. The other constraint in the problem will be that the weeks to crash will have to be less than or equal to the maximum crash times. We already have these ranges of cells defined on the spreadsheet, so we'll implement them in Excel's solver tool. With this information entered in the spreadsheet, we're ready to use Excel's Solver tool. We go to the Data menu, and Solver may or may not be installed on, as an add-in on your machine. If it is, it will appear to the right on the Data menu. If it's not, you can go to File, Options, add-ins, and click on Manage Excel Add-ins and Go at the bottom. While my self solver add-in box is checked, if yours is unchecked, you would simply check that box and click OK. Now solver should appear on your data menu. This is the solver window. The first thing we set on the solver window is the objective. So we put the box in the objective, the cursor in the objective box. In this case, click on the total crash costs. Our objective is to minimize total crash costs that still meet the, the deadline. So we need to select the button for minimize. The changing variable cells, or decision variables, are the values that are under the control of the manager. And in this problem, that is the weeks to crash. So we place the cursor in that box and highlight the decision variable cells, which are the weeks to crash. Now we need to add constraints. The constraints box is in the middle. We click Add. And to add the deadline constraint, in the constraint window we put the project completion time in the left-hand box. 
We maintain the left center equal to symbol. And we put the deadline in the right hand part of the box. To enter the maximum crash time constraints, we click Add. We put the weeks to crash in the left hand side, and we can highlight the entire range. We use the less than or equal to symbol. We click, put the cursor in the right hand box, and highlight the max crash time. Be sure that the make unconstrained variables non-negative box is checked. This will make sure we don't have any negative crash times. For now, the solving method that appears is adequate. Now importantly, we're going to click close to start with and just save the information we've entered into Solver. What we would like Solver to do is tell us the best combination of weeks to crash that minimizes the crash costs while still meeting the deadline and the max crash times. Starting values can be important for the algorithm that Solver uses to find the solution. And typically the maximum crash times are good starting values to enter into Solver. So I've entered the max crash times, and now I will open Solver back up and click Solve. We get a box that tells us that Solver has found a solution. For this particular type of problem, it's usually a good idea to open up Solver two to three more times and click Solve just to make sure that it has settled on the best solution. The algorithms that Solver uses are complicated, and we want to make sure that we don't get stuck in any values that aren't the best ones. So now we see a solution that says crash week uh, activity D by one week at a cost of $75, and that will allow us to meet the deadline. Another part of the question asks us, what is the maximum crash time? The best way to answer this would be to change the deadline by one day at a time and each time go back to the original starting values. Click solve two to three times just to make sure we've settled on the correct solution. Now we see we want to crash activity D by two weeks. This is not surprising because it's the cheapest activity to crash. Now in a moment, I'm going to pause the recording and keep going down by one week. So you can do the same. I've gotten to a point where I've solved down to a deadline of 11 days and have a crash time solution. Notice that the solution is now to crash the activity that costs 300 to crash most likely because it's part of the critical path, while there are still cheaper activities. So I'm going to try 10 days as a deadline. And I still get a solution at 10. Once I go to 9, as a deadline and solve three to four times, I keep getting a window that says Solver could not find a feasible solution. This means to me that we can't complete this project in a deadline of nine weeks. So we could put 10 back in and it believe, looks like we've found our solution. So this ends the demonstration of the project crashing model.